Please stand by. We're about to begin. Good day and welcome to the UFC 208 conference call. Today's call is being recorded. At this time, I would like to turn the conference over to Matt Romanovich. Please go ahead, sir. Hi. Hi. Thank you. And welcome, everyone, to the UFC 208 conference call. Today, we'll have the two women competing for the inaugural Women's Featherweight Championship. Joining us is former UFC Wyndham Bantamweight champion Holly Holm versus decorated kickboxer Jermaine Durandamy. Also joining the call is arguably the greatest mixed martial artist of all time, Anderson Silva, versus his opponent, the number eight ranked middleweight in the world, Derek Brunson. UFC 208 takes place on Saturday, February 11th at the Barclays Center in Brooklyn, New York, live on pay-per-view. Just to let you know, we are uh, Holly Holm will be joining us in a couple minutes. I will let the, uh, the, all the uh, people know when she has joined us, but otherwise I'll turn it over to your questions. Thank you. If you do have a question at this time, please press star 1 on your touchtone phone. If you are using a speakerphone, please make sure your mute function is turned off to allow your signal to reach our equipment. And once again, that is star 1 if you have a question. We'll pause for just a moment. And we'll go first to Matthew Wells with MMA Latest News. Hi, thanks, everybody. Uh, my first question is for Derek Brunson. Derek, you're fighting Anderson Silva, obviously, arguably one of the greatest fighters of all time, who's known heavily for his counter-striking ability. And what we saw in the, out of your last fight, you were kind of reckless. How do you plan on attacking Anderson in this fight? <laughs> uh, yeah, I would call it reckless. I would say greedy. I would say pretty much I just pretty much fell in love with trying to knock people out really quick instead of letting the fight develop. Anderson is a great counter striker, but uh, I'm pretty fast. And, you know, you look at my previous fights where, you know, I wouldn't say I was as reckless, but, you know, I went in to finish and I definitely knocked guys out. You know, Uriah Hall is on the level of Anderson, Anderson Silva striking, you know. I'm not saying better or less than, but, you know, another striker, and I was able to knock him out uh, by moving forward. Okay, you think I went over. Anderson will get you right back in the mix towards the top of that division for, you know, on the short list again for the title pitcher? Yeah, I think so. You know, uh, middleweight is the best division in the UFC, in MMA, in my opinion. Uh, 1 through 15, so many historical guys, so many stacked and game guys. I mean, you go to a guy uh, – just everybody's competing at the top level, you know. Everybody's ready to fight, you know, and, you know, it's a coin flip in a lot of the fights whenever they're made. Very cool. Thank you. Um, and for Anderson, obviously your your legacy in the sport's already been defined. What does this fight against Derek mean to you? Seu legado já foi definido no esporte, mas o que é essa luta que significa? Oh, I think this fight is a great challenge for my time, no? I think uh, everything in my life now is for a uh, challenge for by yourself. All right, and are you still in... Like, is the title still something that you still want to hunt for, or are you just still about taking fights that, you know, or that are going to be exciting fights and just going out there and having a, a good time and putting on a good show for the fans? E o título ainda é uma coisa que você pensa, ou você está só realmente pensando em lutar e fazer grandes lutas e, e continuar assim? Oh, of course. Yeah, I, I stay in, the, in this division, and I've working hard for a long time in my life, and... Fight uh, is part of my life, you know, and we see is the uh, change everything in my life. I I I need you give back to we see everything because we see giving the opportunity for change everything in the world, you know, for inspiration, the new generation, my opponents, and. 
Yeah, of course. I think this is the great for uh, my story uh, inside the UFC. And yeah, of course, this is my my goal. Right, thank you very much. And lastly, for Jermaine, obviously a huge opportunity here for you to be the first women's featherweight champion going down in Brooklyn. Tell me how you're feeling heading into this fight against Holly Holm. Uh, I feel amazing. I feel absolutely amazing. I'm in great shape. Um, I'm in great spirit. I'm in even better spirit. And, uh, you know, it's for me, for me, it's a, really an honor to fight such a great champion as uh, Holly Holm and to write history February 11th. So uh, February, February 11th can't come fast enough for me. I've been asking, given any indication what would possibly be next for you if you did come away victorious, considering... There hasn't been any other females added to the 145 division? To be honest, uh, I haven't heard really much about it. And it's right now it's not of my concern either because I still have a big task in Holly Holm in front of me. So uh, let's fight with Holly first and see what comes after. All right. Thank you very much, guys. And once again, that is star one if you do have a question at this time. We'll go next to Rick Wright with the Albuquerque Journal. Hi, a uh, question for Derek. Uh, Derek, I know you do a lot of your training at home in North Carolina. Uh, what's your relationship with Jackson Wick at this point? Did you train here at all? Uh, for this fight, and will Greg or any of the Jackson coaches be in your be cornering for you on the eleventh? Yeah, um, yeah, for sure. Still, definitely uh, make my way out to Jackson's MMA. This fight occurred on short notice, so I didn't have that much time to prepare. So my main focus was to get in front of guys who were good strikers, just like Anderson, and um, I actually consulted Greg and uh, Mike Winklejohn and asked them their thoughts whether it was best, you know, if I made a quick trip down to Albuquerque or if I go to, you know, New York and I had Atlanta. I had some guys that kickbox, and, you know, in glory who can emulate Anderson Silva and we kind of decided that might be the better option to go ahead and, you know, being that we have a short amount of time is to get some guys who can move and mimic uh, Anderson. Okay. But will Greg and Wink or some of the Jackson Wink coaches be, be cornering for you? Yes, uh, you? Greg, Greg will be cornering me. All right. Thank you. We'll go next to Damon Martin with Fox Sports. <clears throat> uh, yeah, first question is for Anderson. Uh, Anderson, I know that you took your last fight on very short notice against Daniel Cormier, and this one also came up on shorter notice. Uh, were you were you disappointed you didn't get more time to train, or, or did you have enough time to, to prepare for this fight, uh, considering the timeline of how it was made? Você aceitou aquela luta com o Cormier de última hora, e essa também mais ou menos de última hora. Você, você queria ter mais tempo? Você está feliz com o tempo que você tem para treinar? Treinou bem? Uh, yeah, I think uh, more time is important for, uh, for um, uh, training, for strategy, everything. But uh, I know I'm crazy. It's the same my coach say, you, Anderson, you definitely crazy. You training one month in ten days, one month in ten days, you crazy. But okay, you, you take the fight in two days. That that one is no problem for you. But next time, please. More time for schedule, for strategy, everything, okay? Please, Anderson. And I say to my, my coach, come on, this is my life. Fight is my life. I'm so happy. I'm very happy uh, to work together in UFC. And, you know, I'm, I love my job. I go to fight because this is me. And I know, Anderson, you've never been afraid to fight anybody. I mean, you fought the light heavyweight champion on two days' notice at UFC 200. But I know you've made a lot of comments recently about wanting to fight Conor McGregor. Uh, like, how serious are you about that fight? And why, why is that a fight that, that you know, seems like something that you really want these days? It's clear that we fight with anyone, but 
Por que você está falando do Conor McGregor? Por que, que é uma luta que te interessa? So, uh, uh, first of all, I respect a lot Conor McGregor because this man changed everything uh, in UFC, you know, uh, because I'm I'm very respect the the, the style, the Conor McGregor style. I think is a great challenge for my uh, martial arts techniques. And I don't talk for disrespect, Connor. I just for challenge for myself and for uh, the best uh, stand-up uh, fighting, you know. I, I respect Connor and I think... This is the great show. It's the great fight for rest uh, my life and rest the story that we've seen. You know? Yeah, you uh, you know you you hold so many records in UFC history for all the great things you've done, but you are coming off a couple of losses. How how important is it to get a really impressive win over Derek Brunson at UFC 208 for you? Você tem todos os recordes do UFC, mas está vindo de várias derrotas. Né? Qual a importância de uma vitória agora? Uh, yeah, I think is the is the, uh, the victory in 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 your life, in my life, in your life, in everybody's life is important. But I think the more important now in my life is Stay happy is working happy stay happy because uh fight is for long time in my life I working hard for for uh fighting with C for uh come to uh stay uh in the top in the you know now uh I change a little bit my focus I have more time for my family. I have more time for uh, my different jobs uh, outside the 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 UFC. But uh, I think is for me now is no too much important how much fights I lost, how much fights I win. I just uh, put in my heart, uh, do my best, and go to fight happy and when I happy when I say happy I think everything change and back to uh Anderson Spider Silva, you know? Yeah. And last question for you, Anderson. You know, I remember when you signed that ten fight contract with the UFC, you said you absolutely intended on fighting out all ten fights um, do you still have that same mindset? I mean, as you go into this one, that you still have a lot of time left in front of you for fighting, or, or have you put a timeline on on how many more fights you want to have? Quando você assinou aquele contrato de 10 lutas, você disse que queria fazer todas as 10 lutas. Você ainda sente isso? Você ainda acha que você vai fazer isso? Quantas lutas você acha? Yeah, yeah, of course, of course. I'm I'm so happy because uh, in my heart I have an energy. I have a lot of energy in my mind, uh, in my heart, and I talk to my family. My family uh, uh, gives me support for uh, uh, finish my contract in UFC. And I don't know, I think I have the energy for a fight for more years. I think uh, maybe... Seven years, I don't know, but I have an energy. This is more important. I have energy, I have a passion, and I love my job. Thank you, Anderson. Uh, one question for, for Jermaine. You know, Jermaine, obviously this fight with you and Holly Holm came together uh, after, you know, we knew there were rumors that you were going to fight Chris Cyborg, Holly was going to fight Chris Cyborg. Now we've got Chris Cyborg dealing with her USADA information, you know, USADA situation. 
I'm just kind of curious. The specter of you know Chris Cyborg being considered the number one featherweight does that does that hang anything over this fight? I mean, do you, do you welcome the chance to eventually fight her? Or, I mean, does it does it change anything for you that you know there's going to be so many questions about her because I think most people do consider her the you know the number one featherweight in the world. Mm-hmm. I I respect everybody's opinion and. Uh... Absolutely, you know, Chris got the offer to fight Holly. Chris got the offer to fight me, and she wasn't able to, and uh, I don't know the exact reason she wasn't able to. Then Holly and I got the offer to fight each other, and we both said yes. I mean, if you're a champion, you fight against everybody, and, um, you know, Holly and I are going to fight, and one of us will decide who is the next number one, and... If we have to, de- if one of us has to defend the title against Chris Cyborg, it will be Chris Cyborg who we uh, defend the title against. I, I mean, we're gonna fight, and no matter what people think, you know, we- one of us will be the 145 champion. And um, I mean, if you look at uh, Holly's credentials and if you look at my credentials, I think we both accomplished a lot for the sport. So I think we absolutely belong in the top. Awesome. Thank you, Jermaine. You're welcome. And Holly Holm has joined us. Hello. And once again, that is star one, if you do have a question at this time. And we'll go next to Lance Pugmire with the Los Angeles Times. Hey guys, how's everyone doing? Um, Holly, I wanted I wanted to ask you, what was your involvement, if if anything, in forming this featherweight division? I mean, did they did they come to you and say, hey, we're thinking about doing this? Will you fight no. at one forty five? Okay. No, the the call I got was they had already talked to my manager and my trainer, and they just said uh, the call I got was from my manager or my trainer, and he just said, hey, remain around me. 145, what do you think? I know you're probably already going to say yes, but i got to see what you say just so I can tell. And I said, let's do it. So that was it. There was no talk of like, hey, we want to plan this. Do you want to do it? Um, they called me and said the name, the date, and the weight, and that was it. Did you have a conversation at all about Cyborg before that? Uh, Cyborg, I did. Um I had gone out and had a meeting with Dana White, and he had. Uh, this is before the 145 pound uh, division was a talk, and he just said, "Hey, we don't really have anything else other than what we're kind of offering right now. The fight with Chris Cyborg at the catchweight 140. What do you think?" And I said, "I'm open to that. See what she says. You know, obviously we'll negotiate whatever." And um, she said she wasn't ready and didn't want to go that weight, and. Um, so then I was after that, uh, I was supposed to fight. They had pitched to fight Kat Zingano, uh, Jane, it just this last weekend in Denver. And uh, so I actually thought that was going to go through, and then it didn't. And then I got the call for this fight with Jermaine, and uh, here we are. How, how, how are you feeling about it? Like uh, another reporter was saying, like there's no one really else listed in the division. You've got the, you know... Cyborg being in limbo with the waiting on the drug um, suspension mm-hmm. or whatever's going to happen there, and Ronda, you know, maybe headed to retirement. How are you feeling about the the quality of the division at this point? Um, here's the thing: each division has to start somewhere. And when they first started the 135 pound division, it was a title fight with Ronda uh, coming, you know, over. Um, it's built from there. And mm-hmm. I know that right now this is the start of the division, but there's so many girls that want the opportunity. I can guarantee you they could build this division in no time. They just have to make some phone calls because there's a lot of girls out there that are very tough, and they're, they're all – everybody's goal is to be in the UFC. That's the, that's the big thing. Um, so I, I don't know. I, I feel like, yes, it's just the start of it, but it's got to start somewhere. I think that they're just going to start here, but – I know they're going to be signing girls. I know they're already talking to other girls. Maybe maybe nothing's really been like, you know, a full roster has been set up yet. But um, 
and and then again, obviously, we're the fighters out of promotion, so I'll leave it up to them to to do that. That's what they do. Yeah. What's your thoughts? Do you do you think that Ronda is done? Uh, I I'm one of those. I'm a firm believer in the fact that in, once a fighter, you're always a fighter, and she might not ever want to fight again. She might not fight for two years, and then she might say, you know what, I'm really egging for it. I want to get back in there. I want to fight. I've had enough of this regular life business, you know. Um, I think that right now, I, I think that just in an honest opinion, I bet she just kind of feels, you know what, maybe I'm going to focus on some other things right now. Um, going from a big high to a big low. Um I have a lot of respect for her. I, I've never said any different. Uh, I hope she's happy. I hope she does what she wants to do, whether that be fighting, whether that be go on to other things, focus on other things, you know. But all i got to say is any fighter, young enough, they might come back for another fight. You never know. You never know. Yeah, <laughs> yeah especially if you're a champion. I'm sure that that's something that she wants to try to avenge if she is, yep. does have that mentality. But um, last question Obviously, Jermaine, with the um, kickboxing ability, and you have, you, you know, you're very well equipped in that area as well. Um, is that how this fight is going, no doubt about it, or how do you prepare for such a battle? I want to be ready for everything. I know that, yes, she's coming from a stand-up, you know, history. Uh, that's what her fights have been, a stand-up, same as mine. Um, but we both are in, you know, mixed martial arts now. And I know that she's training to be ready in all areas, as I am as well. So I never put my thoughts and put in my head that a fight's going to go a certain way because you never know what's going to happen. Um, we always have to have plan A and plan B. And I just know that I'm up against a very seasoned fighter. She's had a lot of experience. I'm very aware of that. And I know that I have my hands full with the fight. And so we've really been training in all aspects of the game um, just to be ready for all of it. Great. Thank you so much, Holly. Thank you. And we'll go next to Van Tate with KRQE TV 13. Yeah, this question is for Holly. Holly, um, uh, talk about preparation and how, how prepared you feel to go out and, and have success this time around. I do feel prepared for this fight. I feel like I'm visualizing the fight well. I feel like I'm physically ready. I feel like I'm mentally ready. Um, I am coming off of two losses. I know I'm in a place I've never been in my career before ever, uh, not in boxing or MMA. And I know that I'm coming in, and there is extra nerves that I have that I put on myself, but I just want to use it for good motivation, you know, Um I don't want another loss on my belt, and so it's really been driving me to train very hard. Um, I do feel like I train hard all the time, but I do feel very focused, and I do feel ready for this fight. Do you feel excited to fight in New York? I, I'm, I'm excited to fight. Um, New York is definitely, you know, it's kind of one of those, like, the mecca of, like, fights. Um, I know it's mostly always in boxing, but you always watch these huge fight at Madison Square Garden, you know, and through my boxing career, I got to see that. So now to be in MMA and be able to go to Brooklyn and, and be able to fight, I think is really cool. I think it's an awesome uh, experience. Every fight is a journey. This is definitely a different journey and a very unique one at that, and I am very excited for it. You know, you had a, quite the journey uh, during your boxing career when you when you had to come back from fighting uh, and sophie Mathis. You came back from that... Um, and speaking about Rhonda, I saw an article earlier today where they said that you broke her. And when you hear that, what do you think? Do you think that that uh, that that it was that devastating for her, or or because the more time passes by, it's like that wound gets bigger. Here's what I think about that. A lot of people have asked me about that fight ever since she's had the fight with Nunez and. Coming off of a knockout, Rhonda or anybody else, I'm not saying it's just her. This is just fighters. You come back from a knockout, it is very, very hard. Mentally and emotionally, you second-guess yourself. I remember when I got knocked out, every time I would spar for the first few weeks, it was like every time I would get hit, I'd be like, am I okay? Yeah, I think I'm okay. Am I okay? Yeah, I think I'm okay. 
you really second guess yourself a lot. And no matter what happens in training, it's still different in a fight. It's still real in the fight. There is stuff I will do in training all the time that I have never done in a fight before. Once you do it in a fight, then you're more confident to throw it in a fight. But I'm telling you that the, the real moment and the real test is in the fight. And coming back from a knockout, there's those moments where you get those first punches landed on you, and it's a make-or-break moment. And I knew that going into that fight, everybody asked me if I thought Ronda was going to win or not. And I said, you know what, I don't know who's going to win. However, I'll be able to tell you who's going to win in the first few punches of that fight. Because when I watch this fight, those first few punches Ronda gets hit with, she's either going to say, oh, hell no, not again. Or she's going to think, oh, hell no, is this happening again? There's two minds that she can go to. And when she did get those first punches landed, I think it was just one of those moments where it was like, you know, that's a moment. That's a moment. And it's really hard to tell your mind differently. Your mind is very powerful. And I think that that wouldn't have happened if I didn't already knock her out before because her mind wouldn't have been there. If her and Nunez fought before Ronda and I fought, I do feel like that fight would have gone longer than it did. I really do, and I don't think anybody would argue with me on that. Um, but with that being said, um, who knows if Ronda's really done or not. Maybe she'll come back in the future. Maybe she just needs a little time to really take time off. I know she had a year off, but it was a year off and back into a title fight, you know. Um I don't know how much she changed in there uh, with training. I don't know. I think any fighter, they can only know for themselves what they really feel. But I guess I don't really feel like I broke her, but I do know that coming off of the knockout, when I knocked her out, yes, that that helped the fight with Nunez go faster, if that makes any sense. I don't mean that in any rude way. but No, 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 I understand. And then what about, you know, like you, you made an interesting point about coming back from a knockout, so... So you were able to do that. Mind you, it was a different uh, sport, but but uh, it was a combat sport. But um, you you were able to do that. How much has that helped you grow in in, in the sport that you're in now as, as far as uh, being an MMA fighter when you have to dig down deep and really pull out, you know? You know, I think a lot of, a lot of what helped me get through a lot of that was just, you know what, everybody around me was so negative, like, oh, my gosh, do you really think you can come back from that? Why don't you just retire? Why don't you just, you know, it was like this constant negativity. And I remember I told my dad, I said, I'm so sick of people coming up and asking me if I'm going to retire and, you know, if I'm going to fight, what am I going to do different? And he goes, Holly, that when people ask you or say, you know, oh, don't you want to retire? He goes, because that's what they would do. Because they don't, they don't fight. That's what they would do. They wouldn't, they wouldn't have the nerve to give themselves a chance to go again. That's why you're the one that's going to do it and not somewhere else. And that really helped me. Like, you know what? Yeah, somebody else is going to sit here and say I'm done. But guess what? That person that's saying that doesn't even fight. They don't even, they don't even get in there. They don't even, have the, they don't even have the balls to do it, you know? It's up to me. And so it was one of those things that I just dug deep. And I thought, you know what? It doesn't matter what anybody else does. This is not their job. And I just thought, you know what? It's going to bother me to the day I die if I don't give myself a chance to come back. I could get knocked out again. But if I win, how often is that? And so that was kind of my mindset. I thought, I don't really care what anybody else does. It's up to me. And I'm doing this. This is my job. And I'm doing it because there's a lot of people out there that can't do it. And that was kind of the mentality I had to take to come back from the loss. I kind of had to have that mode of it was me against the world. And there's a reason why it's up to me to do it. You know, I think it, it's definitely a hard mental battle for sure. All right. Hey, thanks so much, Holly. Thank you. We'll go next to Spencer Kite with UFC.com. My first question is for Holly. You you mentioned in there sort of coming back and, and taking time and fighters need to really assess and aren't sure of things. These last two fights obviously didn't go your way. What have these last six months been like for you in preparing you and, and getting you ready for this opportunity to come back, as you said earlier, in territory that you've never been in before, having lost two straight? Mm-hmm. You know... I think one thing that kind of helps me to not feel completely just defeated, I know I'm coming off with two losses, but 
two things. When you're trying to make it to the top, you have to start from the bottom in the beginning of your career. So who's to say I can't come back right now? It takes a lot of hard work. It's step by step. So, yes, I know that. And I just went back to the building block. Uh, we're going to climb up this mountain that I just slid down, you know. Um, and then on the other case, too, I know I have two losses, but I also know that I didn't get, like, schooled in my last two fights. You know, with Misha Tate, I was winning until I got choked out. I got choked out, completely unconscious. She won the fight. But I know that I was being competitive. And my fight with Shevchenko, she's up for the title bout right now. And I know that it was still a closer fight. In my heart, I know that she won that fight. She was a better fighter that night. That night. I do feel that, you know, I, I believe that I that anybody can be beat. And I still have that in me. I have confidence in me. So, yes, I'm coming off of two losses. But I still have confidence in my ability. I just need to perform it. Were you hopeful to get back sooner than this, or did you need to take sort of six months to to have a little bit of downtime, process some of those things, and, as you said, start that building process again? Well, thank you to my broken hand. I couldn't come back any <laughs> sooner anyway. Um, so I actually still was, I was in the gym still working on kicks and things when I couldn't use my hand, uh, drilling some things with my coaches, uh, what you just do just because I didn't really, it, it was just drilling, not like live rolling because I couldn't really use my hands for a while. Um, you know, it's, so yeah, that kind of like forced me to have time off. I wish it was on my own accord and I was actually out vacationing and decided right. to have time off. That would have been my way to go, but uh, I think it did force me to have to just take a step back and process a few things and just kind of dig deep and, and change how I thought about certain things and deal with certain things that had going on. So um, here we are. You know, I, I definitely felt I felt very in shape and good and ready for both of my last two fights. I have no excuse at all. I lost because I didn't perform, and that's that. Um, and really, I just I really wanted to dive into this training camp, and I thought there is no room for losing focus. There's no room for not performing. Let's really just, let's get into this. And all this hard work, gosh, I just want to make it worth it. And one for Jermaine, if I could. You had a very decorated kickboxing career, undefeated, um, but haven't necessarily received a lot of attention through your four fights in the UFC. Does this feel like the moment for you where you get to really show people on the largest stage possible who you are as an athlete, who you are as a fighter, and what you are truly capable of? Um, yeah, in a sort of way it does. I mean, I'm fighting a top competitor in, in Holly Holm. I mean, she's a decorated fighter, and um, there's no doubt in my mind that I have to be on top of my top game. You know, I have to perform. February 11th, I have to perform. I cannot make a mistake. And, uh, you know, it's okay. I understand that a lot of people uh, do not know a lot about my uh, my kickboxing career. Uh, I'm probably because I'm also not from the United States. I live in Europe, and, you know, the kickboxing scene in the United States is not as big as it is in Europe. So it's okay. Uh, I mean, it's always nice to be the underdog and be the unknown fighter. So I, I kind of like my position right now, to be honest. And last one, just where would a victory next Saturday night stack up for you in your career with, with multiple kickboxing titles? I think uh, I think if I win, that will solidify my, my career. I, I mean, I've had an amazing career so far already. And I have accomplished things that I could have, in my wildest dreams, I couldn't believe that I... You know, I, I did all these things, and, uh, yeah, winning a UFC belt, I mean, I think that will solidify it. I mean, in the past, a lot of people have doubted me and told me I couldn't do it, and I'm a believer you can do anything you want in life as long as you put your heart and soul to it. And, uh, yeah, I want it. I, I want to win, and I want to solidify my career, and it would be amazing. So. 
Awesome. Thank you all for your time. Good luck next weekend. Thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> And I'm, I just wanted to let everybody know, uh, we're, uh, Jermaine is going to leave us at this point. We promised her we would keep her under about a half an hour due to it almost being midnight in Amsterdam. So thank you, Jermaine. <laughs> um, I appreciate thank it. you, guys. And uh, we'll see you next week in Brooklyn. But I'll, I'll go ahead and turn it back uh, to questions for the remaining uh, three athletes on the line. And we'll go next to Damon Martin with Fox Sports. Please go ahead. Your line is open. Uh, hey, Holly. Uh, just a couple questions for you. Um, I know it's cliche to say that the next fight is always the most important fight of your career, but this is kind of a weird situation because you've never faced two defeats in a row, yet you are fighting for a title. So, I mean, I, where would you rank this in terms of, like, importance in your career to go out there and get a win in this fight? It, yes, it is one of those that okay, it, I need to treat it like it's, you know, the last fight of my career because who's promised another, you know, opportunity. But, um, I, I def, you know, for me right now, just coming off of two losses, I feel like I really need to prove myself. Um, I mean, I always feel like I need to prove myself in every fight, but I'm in a place that I haven't been before. And I just... Um, I really want to make the most of this opportunity. It's a very important opportunity, and uh, I don't want I don't want it to pass me by and not do what I know I'm capable of. How important? I know you know you you, you kind of knew going into the call today and probably next week in Brooklyn. There's going to be questions about Ronda because she just fought, she lost. Mm -hmm. You know, talk about retirement, so it's going to come up. But how important is it for you to define your MMA legacy? You've already defined your boxing legacy, but your MMA legacy away from Ronda Rousey to do things like winning this title and defending the title. How, how important is it for you to define your career away from from that one fight with Ronda? Right. I mean, I um. <laughs> I don't want to only have one big... You know, I don't want my whole career to be defined around getting the belt from Ronda. I want my career to be defined by me being the best fighter I can be and accomplishing the biggest things I can in whatever competition comes in front of me. So I want this for me, for my career. I don't want to be, you know... I don't, I don't want it to just be around the one, you know... I want them to remember that. I want them to remember, you know, everything after. I want them to. I want to be able to do a lot in this career still. Yeah. And, you know, of course, you, you were the bantamweight champion. I know your coach, Mike Winklejohn, mentioned this, and just to kind of get it on the record, you're not done at bantamweight. It's, even if you win the title, is that is that a good assumption that you will eventually return to bantamweight one day? You know, I think – uh, the best I can explain that is I just see if, um, in the perfect world, what do I really want? Well, I want to be able to have both titles. Why not? I don't want, I mean, aim high. My dad says aim high, and that's what I want to do. I want to aim high. I want to go for, I want to go for the most, the best, um, Right now, I definitely can only focus on this fight, but I have big dreams, and in my big dreams, that would be having both uh, belts at the same time. And last question for you, Holly. Uh, you know, it's it's impossible to to you know not to think about you know what lies ahead. You have a very tough fight with Jermaine coming up next weekend. But, uh, you know, this fight originally started out, you know, it was you and Chris Cyborg, or it was going to be Jermaine and Chris Cyborg. We got Megan Anderson, who was over in Invicta as a, as a featherweight champion, you know, two very legit featherweights. We know both you and Jermaine are coming up from 135. Is there an excitement if everything goes well in this fight to kind of prove yourself against maybe one of those two down the road? Because I think, you know, right now they're considered kind of one and two as far as, you know, featherweights right now is already defined featherweights. Like, do you, do you look for to those kind of challenges, whether it's Cyborg or Megan Anderson? I just think I want to win this and whatever happens after is great. <laughs> That's all I think. 
I just want to win right now. That's what I want. I want to win. And just, um, I remember Cowboys saying one time, and that's exactly how it feels, you know, winning a fight is like a high. It's like a drug, and you're always chasing that, and that's what I want. I want that victory right now, and that's really as far as I'm looking into it. Thanks, Holly. Thank you. And we'll go next to Mike Baum with Rolling Stone. Hey, Holly, just a quick one for you. Um, I know you kind of talked about not wanting to look past this fight and all that, but you do mention having big aspirations for the future and everything, and Cyborg comes up uh, a lot in that. But given her situation with USADA and her failed drug test in 2011, would you feel comfortable in fighting her at this point? You know, I feel like I'm just going to wait and see what happens with that. Um, You know, when I... When I first signed with the UFC, I had two fights. My one fight being with Raquel Pennington and then Marion Renault. And both of those fights, everybody kept asking me, well, how long do you think that until you fight Ronda? I was like, well, I have these fights in front of me first. got to get through them, you know. And I know that Chris Cyborg is definitely the big name for the 145-pound division, but... Right now, with the situation she has going on, I think I'll just let that pan out. Who knows what's really going on? And um, I don't ever want to throw my eggs in one basket. I don't ever want her to be defined over one fighter. Um, I still have so much to do. Uh, I've got Jermaine Durand in me right in front of me, who's had so many Muay Thai fights behind her, a very seasoned fighter. And... If I don't get through her, then there probably won't even be talk of a, you know, Chris Cyborg fight. I mean, that has to have a lot happen in order for that fight to happen. She's got to deal with whatever's going on with Estada. Who knows what's really happening with that? Obviously something. <laughs> um, you know, and, and in order to even think about another potential fight, I've got to get through this fight. So um, it's like to even think about a fight with Chris Cyborg right now, it's kind of like if this, then that, and then if this, then that. So to me, that's kind of like too far-fetched, like too far out there. Uh, my goal right now is with my, my vision in sight, and that's just this fight. Perfect. And just one for Derek Brunson. Uh, Derek, given Anderson Silva's kind of winless skid over the past few years, does beating him at this stage of his career mean the same to you as it would have, you know, maybe a few years ago when he was at his height? Uh, well, see, I think that's what other people don't really look into. Like... Anderson lost to Michael Bisbing, a close fight. He actually um, knocked him out with a knee, and it was kind of a little controversial with that. Um, He broke his leg in one fight. Um, He dropped his hands, you know, which he typically do. But even in that fight, like, I always watch Anderson Silva, and I always like this fighting style. But even when he fought Chris Weidman the first time, I was like, really? Like, when is this fight going to get started? Like, you know, he just he kind of kept his hands down, twinned with him. Just, I guess, he wasn't really intimidated by Chris Weidman's speed, and then Chris Weidman caught him with, you know, a, a crazy combination. So, you know, me looking at the situation, I throw all those losses out, you know. I, I'm looking at, you know, I'm fighting a guy who, you know, not as fast as he used to be, but this guy has all the skills in the world, you know, and considered the best fighter of all time. So, whereas everybody else looking at, like, losses, I mean, how did he lose? Those fights were all close, like, you know, and then it was unfortunate events in those fights. So, I think I'm getting a very gamed and um, ready fighter. And I guess just to follow up for Anderson on that, uh, those comments, do you think maybe people are look at your record, see the losses, the no contest, and maybe don't give you the credit and how those fights actually unfolded and the level of competition you're facing? Você acha que às vezes as pessoas olham para o resultado das últimas lutas sem olhar para a luta em si e olhar quem você estava lutando? Só ver o... Ah, sim, claro, mas isso é... This is uh, is normal because uh, sometimes the people, the, the the fans and people watching the fight don't understand how much uh, uh, you have uh, 
college, you have techniques for putting the fight, you know. And uh, the problem is the the, the fans. Sometimes the fans uh, look the fight, watching the fight, but don't see how much techniques have, how much. Uh, 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 style, uh, different style uh, uh, inside the cage, you know. But uh, I want to say this is 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 yeah. Uh, I I think the people need to change a little bit your mind, your vision for watching the fights because. Um, all fights have the different style, different techniques, and that's it. Okay, thanks, everyone. Yeah, it is no bottom on the news, no? It, it, yeah. And we'll go next to Rick Wright with the Albuquerque Journal. Yeah, a question for Holly. Holly, uh, last time you talked to the media here in, Al- in, in Albuquerque, you, s- you said you, you didn't feel you had total focus the night of, Sh- uh, of the Shevchenko fight. Was there any particular reason for that, and, and is there anything in your preparation uh, for this fight that, that you had to change, anything you have to add or eliminate to uh, try and uh, have that total focus? You know, it's just one of those nights where I was... I had trained hard. I was ready. I was ready for the fight. I was healthy for the fight. But it's just that that day that I just, I don't know, sometimes it's just like this conversation everyone says, like, go, Holly. Go more than two punches, Holly. Go, and I'm not doing it. Um, but, you know, it, 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 it's definitely not uh, making excuses for the fight. Shevchenko's a very tough opponent, and she definitely she you know she did her she did her job. Um, so it was a, a combination of both for sure. But uh, I've had fights like that before. They haven't turned out in losses. I was able to make it through the fight, but I knew that I didn't fight very well, and I could have done a lot better. Um, and good thing I have a you know. The team that's always honest with me. I've even had some, you know, I've had some wins before, and my coach will still say, "Holly, you know, like this some stuff we need to work on." I'm like, "I know, you're right." Like, good thing I, I got away with the win, but I really, I, I wasn't doing everything I needed to do. Um, and that really just comes down to the day of the fight. I think that all of us have days like that in life where we wake up and maybe we just don't feel with it. We're extra forgetful that day, or you know, we just feel a little bit sluggish that day. or I mean, there's just days I think we just kind of feel not 100%. And um, like I said, I was physically ready. I was, you know, I have no excuses of why I didn't perform. It was my own kind of just hit a wall. But is is there, I mean, like, as, as you say, I mean, it's... Uh... It's uh, you never know what's going to happen. Uh, That's right. But, but uh, is is there anything you can in mentally you feel like you can do to make sure that doesn't happen on the eleventh? <laughs> I think when the fight comes, I better think. Yeah, that second loss was depressing. Holly, snap out of it. <laughs> Hopefully, that'll be all I need. <laughs> okay. All right. Thanks, Holly. <laughs> Thanks. And that concludes our question and answer session. Thank you, everyone, for joining the call today, and especially thank you to our participants, Holly Holm, uh, Jermaine Durandamy, uh, Anderson Silva, and Derek Brunson. We'll see everyone live at the Barclays Center on February 11th. Uh, See you next week in Brooklyn. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, guys. Thank you, everyone. That does conclude today's conference. We thank you for your participation.